um, have not um, graded the, um, the projects yet, so um, um, I'll try and do that by Monday. Uh, staff has certain things to read through, so, um, so, so let's see. Um, so the next thing do so um, let's see so I I, uh, I I see no one uh, turned in the homework so I guess you're all taking advantage of the, of the, of the extra time until Monday um, I think probably if you, if you just had two days where you'd probably be fine the longest part would probably be actually writing everything up so people who, who looked at it I think thought it was pretty straightforward um, so. So I, I guess I should move this one down here. But the other thing is, a week from now, there's a poster outline, uh, um, which is due. So this is a poster for your final project. Um, so 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 and then we're going to do have a poster, have an actual poster day um, on the last day of class. Um, um, so this should be fun. So it's it's not going to be here. We're going to do it in MEP 3105. Um, which is on the third floor in the northwest corner, kind of. Is that the room where we had the class before this place? No, it's a slightly bigger room, but it's just down the hall from there. It's the big okay. auditorium style room, right? Uh, not really an auditorium. It's, um, it's still a flat room, oh. um, but it's it's got a bunch of tables in it, and it's got um, it's got more space. So, um, so so we'll do that in there. Um, so let's see. So I I updated I updated the project uh, PDF, and so I, I wrote the actual room number in here. Um, so in case you forget it, thirty one oh five. I've got the room booked from four to seven, but we'll plan to start at the the, the same time. But if you're there earlier, you can get it set up. Um, I don't know. So are, do people have conflicts? Um, Conflicts earlier, like if we started at 4:30, would would people not be able to make it? So the the advantage of doing it earlier is I'm going to send out a general announcement, and we'll try and get some other grad students and faculty to come, and so more people may come if I say it's a bit bit earlier. Um, so so um, so it, it, does anyone have any conflict with starting at 4:30? Okay, so I'll, I'll send out something and, and see if it raises. And if someone does, a couple people do, that's probably okay if they get there a, bit, a little bit later. Um, okay, so, so we'll, we'll plan to do that. So the next, so the, the, the posters, this is not for, um, this is not for two weeks, the actual poster presentation, but I, I want a, uh, an, and, uh, and this is work with 20 points, so still, you know, a pretty good amount of, of grade. And this includes the poster and the presentation. And so I want a draft of your poster in one week from today. So this should be something you send me by email to the, um, to the email account for the class. So, so for the, um, so, and, I'll, and so, um, okay, so, um, so who's made a poster before? So about a quarter of you have made a post before. Okay, so, so let me uh, describe kind of an overview of what I kind of want to see in a, in a poster. Maybe I'll, maybe next class I'll even bring, I should have brought some examples from last year, but um, so, I mean, a, a, a poster is, is kind of like a, um, it is, it is um, it's kind of like a report except you're going to leave out all of the details. Um, so you'll still have charts, but you, the details come when you're standing next to the poster explaining it to someone. Then you say the details. But you, instead, you want to have lots of illustrations and pictures and charts, because that's easier for someone to look at quickly and get the main idea, and then you can help them fill in the details and the explanation. Right? So, um, so, so make sure you have the, the, the key the, the stuff that you do need to make sure that is in kind of uh, in, in the text or and, and this would be like in, in you can capture this in like the subject tank and so forth is where the key um, problems that you worked on and the, and the, and the data and the 
and key ideas, just, just like in the report. And then, and then after that, focus on the techniques from the class you use and, and, kind of, and the stuff you learn from those. And the stuff you learned is not necessarily like, I learned how to do clustering, right? But it's saying like, I, you know, we looked at this data and we were able to predict this result and this is really cool. Right, so that's a cool thing that you want to talk about. Yeah. So like we have team members, so then all the team members have one poster. Yeah, right? so each team has, has one poster. Okay, yeah. and then so we just like make kind of sections and then have it all combined and then explain it on the poster deck. Yeah, so you know you should combine it best into a single poster that captures the whole project. Okay. If it breaks down nicely into two or three parts, that's fine. But if it doesn't, I've got the reports which should help me kind of distinguish you who's done what. Okay. Right? But but you want to tell a coherent story, okay. right, in the, in the poster. So if it breaks down into parts, that's great. If not, then that's And then fine. it's like a physical big poster, so you print out the charts and stick it on a bigger poster kind of. Oh uh, so so there there are kind of two ways um, that you can do this, right? So to to make the poster there's kind of a the simple way is that you can you can make like some charts and you can like make like eight PowerPoint slides and then you just put those PowerPoint slides up on a board and I'll provide some and there are some boards that I can provide that you can that you can bring them with you and then just stick them up when you get there so you come a little bit early and stick them up in the right order so this, so if you do this and you lay out the PowerPoint slides nicely this works fine as a poster uh, but we'll also allow you to do kind of um, like one big image and you're going to have the space you're going to have is like two feet by three feet and you can go e either either direction either the, <coughs> the landscape or the or the portrait and uh, and then you can just you know lay it out any um, way that you want um, and so, um, so 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 it's nice to have kind of a narrative in the poster so when you have eight slides you have an order for them you should probably have an order you're planning to walk through the poster when you actually um, when you actually talk through it. And usually, how I make posters is I I first make a version of it, and then I practice. I speak to myself while, while walking through it. And you know, usually you find a room so people don't think you're crazy. <laughs> but you, you should actually speak through it, and you'll see this whole section of the poster was not useful in explaining it at all. So I don't need that. I can use that space better. Or I wanted to describe this, 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 and then this, but if I ordered them differently, then there's kind of a nice flow. And just kind of doing that, maybe you can do it in your head if you don't have a quiet space, that's fine. But at least think through how you would talk through the poster, and this will help you organize it a lot. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so you have three feet by two feet. And so I'll need a draft by next week, um, next week Wednesday. And this is just by email, and then I'll try and email back comments, and 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 then I'll give you a chance to, to make changes, and then we'll have them printed if you want to do this. The department has a printer um, that will print them out, on, and then they'll be ready for you on the day of the poster session. So then, once we send it to you, so should we send it to your personal email or the TA email? That you uh, neither. There's a there's an email I have for the class that's okay. one off the class book page. Okay. Send it to that one. That way I'll keep track of it. Okay. So after you approve it, then we send it to Chris for printing. Yes, there are specific instructions here. You'll send an email to Chris Coleman, and you'll have data mining posters in the subject title. Um, and uh, and if, if you do that correctly, he will, as the right size, then he will, he will print it for you. It should, you should try and send it to him as a PDF. So you can make it in. You can make one big slide in PowerPoint, and then save it as a PDF. That'll be better. Sometimes, if you make it in PowerPoint and don't convert it, then when he prints it, it'll print fine. Uh, PDF is a much more stable format. So that way, you can verify that the PDF looks okay, and that, that the printer will very rarely actually mess up. So, um, right. So, and, and 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 I would recommend you know, you know, tr try and do something interesting and creative. If you're, if you're creating this. So I think I, let's see, I said there's a, I think I said there's a bonus somewhere. Uh, okay, so, so in the actual poster session, I'm gonna give each of you two other posters you have to look at and write a short review, and then you'll get to vote on anyone else's poster. 
So you can go around and say, this, this was, I thought, the best poster. And then the ones, the top two posters are going to get, um, um, the top two posters are going to get an extra 10 points. Okay, so, so, um, so and the people who won last year, I've, I've got these somewhere, I'll, I'll try and, I don't want to search my computer now, but I'll, I'll try and show them next time. But the people who did them last year made some really cool things. Someone was doing like, analyzing newspaper articles and had laid out the posters so it looked like the front page of the newspaper. Um, someone else was doing clustering of spaces of colors and had all these great images and colors and stuff and the posters look very beautiful. So you use more art skills? It's, it's, it's art skills but it's also thinking of how, and they, they were creative in how they did this but they also conveyed the information what they're doing. If it's just artistic, it's, it's not going to do as well. I mean, if, if you guys think that something very artistic without much content in it is the best, um, that's up to you. You know, you, uh, up to you guys to uh, vote on this. Um, so, I, so I, you know, I, I, I think you'll probably do a better job of deciding this um, than I will. So, um, and I'll ask you as a, as a group, um, you can specify one person to be in charge of this if you want, but uh, I have to go and look at everyone's poster for in like a two hour period. So try and look for a two minute overview that you'll, you'll you, I'll come to you and you'll have two minutes to describe what's on your poster today. I know it's a short amount of time, but you should be able to convey the key points and then, and you know, if you finish in two minutes, I may ask you a question and we may be able to say a little bit more. Um, so, so try and aim for, for, um, for two minutes. And I think, if you if I have about three minutes per poster, I can get through all of them in about two hours. So, um, so we'll see. Um, let's see. What else did I skip over? Um, how, many, how many books do you have? I, I forget the number. I think it's between. It's like 20, 20 post, fifteen or twenty posters. I think it's about 20, 20 projects. So I'll have to look at the numbers. Um, so, so that sounds like that's only 40 minutes, but it actually, there's, gap it, there's gaps in between and it'll, it will take me longer than two minutes of poster. It'll take me about five minutes of poster. So I'll ask questions and, and so forth. So, um, and I'll probably need like a break at some point to, to read this. Um, so, uh, okay, so the, the other thing, that some of you may have seen some posters before that have lots of text on them. They, they have like, you have like the whole abstract or the whole first page of your report on the poster. So this is not, not what I want, okay? I don't want like lots of text. If you want lots of text, bring your report and sit it next to the poster, okay? So there, there are two main types of posters that, uh, um, that you can make. One is where the poster is meant to just sit there by itself and someone can wander up to it and read it, and then you might want more text. The other one is meant to be used as a guide for explaining things, right? That has lots of charts and figures, and if you were to write something on the board to try and explain an idea, the poster is what you would have written on the board, it's just already there, right? Or if you were gonna show charts, the charts are already there. And you wanna show, show just the charts which are needed to convey the, the right information. Um, so, so there are two types of posters. Ones are standalone, one that are stand next to, and I want the stand next to variety. Okay. So if you write one with lots of text, it'll take you longer to write up all the text, and then I'll tell you to go and pick it out. So just don't do it the first time. Um, and and don't make the font too small either. So think about making it so it's if it's on your computer screen, so you can sit and look at the whole poster taking up your whole screen, and you can still read stuff. If it's too small that you can't read it, then someone who's standing, you're going to be standing further away from it, then the text will still be too small even though you print it much larger. So think of it on, on a single piece of paper and hold it up, and if you can read everything, it's probably okay. If you need to squint a little bit, it's probably too small. So that's, that's a good guide for how big the, the font should be. It's easy to zoom in and Try and cram more in there, but then you won't be able to explain to me in two minutes, anyways. So, so don't try and put too much on there. It'll just take you more. The posters can be, you know, just the core ideas. Okay. Uh, so, any any 
broad questions on this, or? Uh, you might have made two. Do they print in color? Yeah. It, okay. <laughs> um, they're printing color, so. There, there are some posters in the, in like the hallway of the, of the MEB, and they're like on a poster board. So yours won't be on a poster board, but you can see kind of the quality. It's pretty good. So they, they just got a brand new printer, and it prints pretty well, so. And um, we can go straight to the margins if we need to have lead for the 2 by 3 or 3 by 2 uh, you can go, I think you can go straight to the margins. Um, you might want to leave some margin to frame it, right? It looks a little better if you like put a physical frame around it sometimes. Uh, but then it, it may not print exactly to the head uh, anyway. So I think you can, the two by three is the area you put the text and the printer may not go all the way to the, to the edge. So it may end up like, Printing it at like 90% um, of 2 by 3 with a little white strip around the outside. Okay, so I, I'll try and bring some, I'll, I'll bring some examples of, of good posters from last year if I can, if I can find them to show on Monday. But, um, or if, if you see some, if any of you went to, there's a poster session uh, um, a few, a couple months ago when there was. The, the prospective students for next year were here. And there are lots of good examples of posters there. So, all right. Um, great. So that's, that's what I wanted to say. Instead of kind of an algorithm for analysis, it's the it's the infrastructure that 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 made um, um, that um, that made the analysis very easy to do. Um, so who here has used MapReduce? Okay. So most people not. Okay. Um, so who? Um, so so a lot of you have heard of it, but you haven't used it. So have you have you seen an algorithm in MapReduce? Oh, that would work, or you just kind of heard it as a as a as a um, buzzword someone's talked about. They have book about it, but not used it. Okay. A mess. Well, I've looked a little bit into like Hadoop, yeah, and, and uh, just written some, um, just done the math and then the reduce functions. Right. We're working about moving kind of our storage in that that sense. Okay. Cool. Um, so who's heard of Hadoop? Okay, so it's basically the same thing, almost. So um, Hadoop is the open source version of MapReduce. So Map, MapReduce is, is the internal version inside Google, which is not public, that they run on their servers. And then this was, I forget the dates on this, maybe 2004? Okay, 2004, and then, and then Hadoop was an open source, source version in Java made at Yahoo yeah. in, the, in, the, in the late 2000s. Um, so, um, um, so this is the open source version. Um, and so now if you go in, um, if you go and look for Hadoop and you download all the associated stuff, there's actually a lot more of this package. It was originally just the open source version of MapReduce, but there's actually a lot of other functionality built in, where inside of Google, these are all different different products that they 
Um, but Hadoop was originally just the open source version of Mavericks. And I'll, I'll mention a little bit more of this. From, from what I've heard of, you know, from using this, using Hadoop, and talking to people working actually inside, inside Google, is MapReduce is actually implemented a fair bit better and faster than Hadoop. Um, and there are some research implementations of similar things <coughs> which get like uh, 60 times speed up or something over to. So, so, but it's, the, the, the key thing about it is not necessarily the speed itself, but it's the scalability. Um, and so we'll, um, we'll talk about this. So, okay, so, so before we get into the details about MapReduce, I want to talk about another buzzword. Um, so actually, um, two words buzzword. Um, big data, right? So so who's, so you've all heard the um, the buzzword about big data. Um, there's another one. Um, data science, maybe. Um, right. So you may have heard this. So. Um, so I I think these two are very similar to each other. Um, the, I'm going to give you my spiel on on, um, on data science, and then you know describe MapReduce in this picture. And I think they're actually very related. MapReduce was the first infrastructure really built to deal with big data and and to really do data science well. So, um, so who's heard of the scientific method? Right. So there's. Um, so how does this work? Um, so what is the scientific method? Some observed thing and then you formulate a hypothesis and then... Uh, oh... Be a problem. Okay. Uh, Alright, so, so the, 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 often the first thing in the scientific method is to form a... Um, hypothesis. So you form some hypothesis about the world, and this is usually based on some casual obser observations, or you've kind of been looking at something. You say, "Aha! I think there's some pattern there, right?" And then the second step is you go and you gather um, data, right? And then once you have this data, then you um, you test the um, hypothesis on data. And so, so if the hypothesis is validated by the data, then you say hooray and you try and you know, write some paper on it. If it's not validated, then you go back and form a new hypothesis. So, so this is no or yes then um, yeah. Right. So, so, so if your hypothesis is valid, all is good. You've you've come to some scientific conclusion, and there are some statistics in here you need to do to do this properly. But so, and so, th this is really how science has worked a lot apart from about um, from about um, 1900 to about 2000. Right. So, so from about the scientific method. You know, maybe starting with Fisher or so in around 1900 um, to around 2000, this is how people did science. Okay, so, so what changed around 2000? Well, people had been doing this for 100 years, and they had been gathering this data over and over again. And they said, well, if I'm going to form a new hypothesis, I don't necessarily need to go and gather new data. I can go and use data someone else has gathered. And what had happened is, people, some people got really good at this part of just gathering this data and just didn't even have, have a hypothesis, just said, I can gather all this data, I'm going to do this, right? And so, um, 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 and now data science is where, um, is where you start with, um, with um, already, Um, gathered 
of data, right? So you, the, this is before you even start. This is phase zero. You start with data that already exists. And then step one is you, you try to find a, a um, statistic um, the um, significant um, structure, right? So, so you're you're trying to find a hypothesis which you already know is valid. So, or the, this is you know so a find a valid um, hypothesis. Right, so, the, so this is step one, and, um, and there's no step two. Right, so, so all you need to do is step one. And so this is you know, also what you know, we've been trying to do in data mining. We've been trying to, we have data that we've gathered, or maybe someone else gathered and we had to maybe clean it or something, but then we try to find some structure in it that, we, that, was, you know, um, that was significant structure. And you don't have to go back and forth and regather this data. So, but this ex works because there exists this data that's, that's already been out there. Back in 1900, when Fisher was kind of in, inventing statistics and, and uh, some techniques like this, I guess you could probably go back to Mendel, which was probably 1800s, or is that even earlier? Probably 1800s. Um, but when, when Fisher or Mendel were doing this, they said, I think there's this pattern in, these, in, in the way these leaves, and then they go out and collect all these leaves. Right, and then do this. Now, someone already went and collected a bunch of leaves for something else, and they have them online, and you just need to go and find them. Um, but to get things more statistically significant, to find more interesting patterns, you needed more and more data. And so these stores of data that you had became larger and larger. So now what you wanted to do is you wanted to somehow have this existing data available so you can quickly try and find structures and patterns in it. And so this is what MapReduce really excels at. Okay? Um, so, so, um, so, this, so we have this on um, this data, and this is going to be very big data. So we have So, so, so we have this big data, and it's, in fact, the reason, if, if the data is small enough that it can fit on your, in, inside of your computer and memory, then you don't need to worry about this stuff. But if your data is so big, so this data is, is um, um, does not fit in, um, in the memory of your machine, it does not fit on even um, one hard drive. So, so, so this data, you know, needs needs a you know cluster of um, hard drives. Um, so I can give you some amount of data. Maybe it's a terabyte. Maybe it's you know, it's a, it's a hundred terabytes, uh, um, or it's like a petabyte or something. This actual number is going to change, right? But the, the the, the point of it is that you can't fit this all on one hard drive. Or maybe you could fit on one hard drive, but then you need to, just to read all the data on and off the hard drive may take too long. Right? So the scale of data that, that, that they're dealing with, if you think of the entire, um, the entire graph of the web, um, maybe you could fit a, fit a bunch of hard drives that, that kind of contain this structure, and you could put a, you know, connect them all up in this, this big box computer. Um, but then just reading all the hard drives is going to take like a week. Right? So you don't even want to read all the data from just one hard drive. You need to somehow use multiple storage spaces for this data and attach to each storage space some sort of processor so you can, you can handle this, this, this data. So it's really, the key is to um, move the um, the computation um, to the data. Okay, so um, so how's this going to work? So there's each, 
this is my picture of a hard drive, by the way. So you have this hard drive, and you have a you've got a way of drawing a CPU. It's supposed to look like this. I don't know. A lot, I've seen a lot of CPUs drawn this way. I uh, I don't know why that is, but um, so this is the CPU. Um, this is the hard drive, and so you have a bunch of these hard drives um, hooked up to this hooked, hooked up to these CPUs. Um, Okay, so, so you have a whole bunch of the structure, and your data is so big, it's stored across these different hard drives. And luckily, because you don't want to read through them all sequentially, there is a CPU attached to each of them. So each of the CPUs can, can read, the, read the data and do something with it. There are some modern systems where, because RAM is getting a lot cheaper, the data is actually stored, you know, anything you want to compute is stored actually in, in the RAM and the memory, so you don't have to actually, you know, retrieve stuff from the hard drive sometimes. Um, the depends on how big your data is, whether this is feasible. Um, but the point is if you if you're collecting a large data set and you have it and you want to kind of analyze it, it's already going to be stored like this as So you don't have it in just one faraway location that you can probe, but it's it's stored across these ones. Um, and so um, before MapReduce came along, the way of dealing with this was techniques from um, from high performance computing, right? So who's who's taken like a high performance computing class here? Right. Okay. So 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 these techniques are all about kind of um, squeezing the most out of your systems, and you're trying to run everything at once. Um, Google is much much lazier than that. They say. I don't care about the absolute fastest speed of these things, but I want to make it easy to use and very scalable. Um, and in fact, the one of the important things is when you store this, Google has, has clusters of hundreds and thousands of, um, has you know thousands of these machines in each cluster, and they may have hundreds of clusters in different parts of the, of the country. And so, when you have that many machines, you know, some of the machines are going to die. And one of the issues with high, for, for high performance computing when you really scale things up is you have to occasionally checkpoint some computation and then when a machine dies you have to roll back to where the checkpoint was and then keep going from there. And this becomes a very painful part of it. So keeping this in mind was one of the key issues. You have lots of these machines, so you're going to have, you know, um, thousands of machines um, and this is going to cause um, uh, some of these machines to die. Um, they're going to, um, the, 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 like machines just fail at a, at a certain rate. And, and if you buy the very state-of-the-art machines <coughs> and, and some of these really powerful hot cores computing clusters, they really focus on really trying to keep them from not going down and they hope that they can really last a long time. Um, Google said, we're going to use cheap machines, and these are going to fail sometimes, and we're just going to deal with it better. Um, so, 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 so they're not going to worry if these machines are, are a failing. Um, OK, so, so, so before you get to actual, so I'm, I'm still, I still haven't gotten to MapReduce, right? So I'm still, still getting there. The, there's, there's some things you need to think of in how you structure the data now that you realize you have these thousands of machines and the machines are going to fail. Right? So one of the important things for dealing with data is to, is to keep data which you need to compare against to be close to each other. There's this notion of locality with data. Um, but so so the, um, the thing with locality is locality is is good when you know what you're going to be computing on the data when you know which things are are should be near each other but that has to do with what sort of properties you want that but if you remember we start with this already gathered data 
And then we need to find some structure in it. But we don't know what the structure is ahead of time. The locality will actually depend on what structure we're looking for. So we can't assume that we have locality initially. Um, for, for some operations later, we'll, we'll try and do this, but we need to kind of, um, we're going to go back to the moving the computation to the data, and then we're going to actually do some work to bring the things that need to be close to each other close to each other. And that's what we was happy in Matthews. But to store the data, we're going to kind of throw locality away a little bit. Okay, so there's going to be some locality, but not complete locality. That's not going to be possible. Um, okay, so, 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 so the, the next key to this whole system is the um, distributed um, file system. So if you're talking Google, their internal representation is called the Google file system. They thought this particular way was important enough to say just put Google file system in front of it. Um, so so it's, it's, it's like how a lot of their data is stored internally. And the, the open source version is called the Hadoop file system, and they do the HDFS. Um, and so, so actually this, this, uh, this MapReduce framework is very useful for, for a lot of things in simple. Um, but there are other versions of the computation part that we'll, we'll see later which address, say, things on certain types of graphs better or when you want to create a summary of something instead of kind of uh, doing, doing a large output where, where you don't quite use MapReduce, but you still use this distributed file system. Um, and so this, I think, will have a more lasting, uh, lasting impact than actual MapReduce itself. This will be used longer than, than, than MapReduce will be used. People are coming up with more specialized things in that So if you look in, in Hadoop, it starts with the HDFS, it builds the MapReduce version on top of it, and then it builds a bunch of other things on top of the HDFS as well. So, so we need to look at how this data is actually stored here. Um, okay, so let's, um, let's start from the bottom. And so you, you're going to have some big, big data set. Um, Um, so big data set D. And so we're going to think of initially each element of the data set. Um, so every D in this, in this D is going to be thought of as, a, as, as an item. Um, and we're going to store these items in a very, um, a, a, a very flexible